what are the rumors that you've heard about what you're doing? Oh, they tell them, they come out here, some of them, and say that uh, I was building a doomsday shelter. And I had a revelation that uh, end of time was going to happen and all kinds of crazy stuff. And I just tell them like it is, it's all about God. It ain't about nothing else. I mean, who would build a doomsday shelter? I mean, Jesus don't even know the end times. Why would I build a doomsday shelter? That's stupid. I mean, of course, people down here in this neighborhood are going to run to when they need a place to hide. They're going to kill me and throw me out in the road and take my shelter away from me. <laughs> That'd be stupid. See, I didn't know one thing about the Bible. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I've just been a loner most of my life, and but I'd always believed in God. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I had to bury my children, my daughter in 1995, Michelle, and my son John in 2002. And when I had that revelation back in October the 4th, 2005, uh, God just asked me to know His Word. And I never had to open the Bible to read it before in my life. When I was 57 years old. And that's, so this, that's is, a sign. this is before? Yeah, that was that was me. That was me. It's still me. The outside. Uh -huh. I was just an old country boy. Still am. Trespassers will be shot on sight. And it means every word it says. Once I started studying the Bible, and this uh, lady down here at the Eastman Credit Union, I was telling her what was going on in my life. She asked me if I was sincere in what I was talking about, wanting to know the Word of God. And I said I was about as sincere as a heart attack. She taught me some basics about the Bible, and then I just stayed in my house for two solid years studying God's Word. I don't go to church, and I don't do religions, and I don't do denominations. Uh, your body is a church. He told me this back seven years ago. He says, if a stumbling block comes up in front of you, he says, I'll remove it. And he has. You get a lot of visitors here wondering what's going on? Oh, it looks like Pal's hot dog stand around here, man. <laughs> yeah. I dug a hole back there. I put a solid square hole in that, that big old rock back there. Mm -hmm. And uh, dug, dug it out with a backhoe. And people said I couldn't do it. It was impossible to do it. But God asked me to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just come across that big rock back there, and I worked on it for two days trying to move it. It wouldn't move. So I just asked God what to do with it. And he said, put a square hole in it. <laughs> it drawed people like flies. I mean, it was just curious what I was doing, and I really didn't know and still don't know mm -hmm. what I'm doing. But I know once that hill come down, and that was our error that happened back when we removed the dirt. We put a ditch up at the top of the hill to drain the water off. And it just gave the water a place to go and soak down in the hill. And the whole hill slid off. Mm. And I'm in the process of putting it back. Okay. And it caved in that hole that I dug out. I'm putting it back the way God's telling me to put it back. Yeah. Uh, I'm using uh, railroad tie timber. You can't break it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sandwiching it together so it won't fall in. I put four boxes of steel nails, 60 penny nails. You have to drive them with a sledgehammer. Yeah. There's four 50-pound boxes already in there, and I've got two sitting there on the porch. And people say, well, how can you afford to do this? How can you afford to do that? I don't worry about price. God said he's my sufficiency, and when I go to fill my backhoe up, I don't look in my pocket and see if I got the money, because I know when I go down there, I'm going to have it to pay. But all of this, God's behind everything you see. He's behind every bit of it. He just gives it to me. And I put it, put it in the pot. I needed the dirt, and I, tra I, I found this lot. I traded for this lot that with all this dirt, and uh, that's how it started. I've done another little project over here. Needed some dirt. Got this lot. Started removing the dirt. And I come across this great big rock right here. And I worked two days solid on this great big rock. And I couldn't couldn't tear it down. 
I couldn't get it down. And I just stopped digging after two days. <laughs> Took my hands off the controls. I said, Father, what should I do with this rock? And he said, put a square hole in it. God said this, his spirit to my spirit. I didn't hear voices. God don't speak to you in voices. He speaks to your spirit, okay? And when he told me to put a square O in it, I just started scratching. And the next thing happened, there was a hole. And this hole turned into be a, a hole, a big cave. It goes back in there 30 feet. And people started stopping by to see what I was doing. I said, I don't know. And I didn't. God just said, put a square hole in that rock. So I did. And people was coming here to look at it because they just thought it was amazing that I could do it with a backhoe and a bobcat. Dig his hole back in solid rock. And I did. But God asked me to. And that's where it started. And then when I removed the dirt off of the hill, I was told to put a ditch up here at the top of the hill to carry the water off. And by putting that ditch up on top of this slate dirt, it caused the hill to come down. And when the hill come down, it tore the top out of the cave and just crushed everything. And I was almost ready to go home. And that's what I told my wife. Uh, until this hill started moving. And then I'm still here. Because I feel like God is directing me. Lucifer's the one to turn the dirt loose. The devil will always death, darkness, and destruction. Okay? God didn't have anything to do with this dirt coming down, just like he don't with bad storms that kills people. That's the devil. God always gets blamed for it. But Lucifer done this. And he almost succeeded in sending me back home. I was ready to go home. And a friend of mine told me, he said, Carver, you don't want to leave that like it is. I mean, all covered up. He said, uncover that hole. Get that hole back out of there. And he said, see what it looks like. Maybe you can do something. And he encouraged me to stay, and, and I'm still here. And then after I got it cleaned out, and I seen the hole was just like it was, and God just said, put a, put a roof on it with an upper room to it. The upper room. Talks about it in the Bible, in the book of Acts. That's where... Jesus told him to go wait till his father sent the comforter. And uh, that's, what I, that's what I call it. I call it the upper room. Yeah. Even had some gloves made up. They said I could put my name on if I wanted to. And I said, no, nah, I don't want my name on it. I said, just, let's just put on there what am I doing. <laughs> the upper room, a place of peace and rest. The thing you see here was under dirt. Yeah. Where we're standing right now. I mean, the whole hill come up. And I'm just in the process of cleaning it up and putting it back together. And uh, getting in here, removing all them great big rocks. I've done this. Everything you see right here. God asked me to put a square hole in this rock, and that's what I've done. And people look at it and say, you didn't do that with a backhoe. And I said, well, you can believe what you want to believe. I said, I don't lie to nobody. But I, I dug it with a backhoe, and after I got back in here, I measured the hole, made sure I had room to get my bobcat in here. Seven by seven. So I took my bobcat and started digging it out, and then I got back in here so far, and the bobcat started breaking cylinders, because it's solid rock. So I had a jackhammer, and I done the rest of it with a jackhammer. Took me six months, solid. Day and night, dig his hole out. I made that bench, that's exactly what it is, a bench. There's a huge drop, and I didn't want to. It just, it just looked like a perfect place for a seat. I've never done nothing like this before in my life. But every, every beam you see above your head up there, I put 60 penny steel nails in there. You have to drive them with a sledgehammer. And where these beams go back into the rock, I took a jackhammer and dug back in there about two foot. It ain't going to go no way. And I put the optic on shape to give it strength because pressure against pressure, it just gives it pressure. And I don't know this stuff. I just do it because God showed it to me. Well, the purpose he's told me was people's going to know there ain't but one God. 
from this project right here? It's not for profit. It's not to be sold. It's just uh, I like playing in the dirt, and I've been retired for a while. I was 57 when I started studying the Bible, and I'm 65 almost now. I've been studying the Bible for seven years. I think people people like to come here. There's so many people come by here, or they did until I had this accident, this dirt for the devil. And it, I, I think they just see me working all the time, and they don't want to disturb me. But that's what I want to do is be disturbed. When I'm working, I'm doing what I want to do. But when people come and ask me questions about the Bible, I'm doing what God has drawn me to do.